Welcome to Worship at Olivet Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We're very glad that you joined our digital worship offering today. Welcome and join with us and join with us in our call to worship. All your work shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Please join with me in our prayer as we welcome the presence of the Lord into our worship. Come to us, Holy One, and immerse us in the beauty of life with you. Come to us, Holy One. Embolden our community with the urgency of your justice in the name of the one who calls us to play and to work in community, Jesus, our beloved. Amen. Now let us join in singing our hymn which is softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling.
join together in our prayer of confession. Lord, there are times that you challenge me beyond my abilities to comprehend. Impetuously, I resist your guidance and rely on my instincts. When I need it most, I am unable to hear your voice or discern your will in my life. Remove the veil from my sight and heal my soul with your boundless compassion. Amen. The good news comes to us from a portion of Psalm 145 that says, The Lord is faithful in all of his words and gracious in all his deeds. And the Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this time comes from the Gospel of Matthew, verse, uh, chapter 11, verses 16 through 19, and verses 25 through 30. Here are Jesus' words. But to what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, hey, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. And we wailed, but you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and yet they said, he has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, but they said, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Here ends the reading of God's word. May it prove to be a blessing to our hearing, our understanding, and our living in the days ahead. Amen. Last week, Jesus had given instructions to his disciples that they should keep moving. Keep moving. There's a big wide world out there that needs healing and needs to hear the good news. And it's not going to happen if you stay in one place. And before he sent them out on their mission to heal and share the good news, he also told them that they might receive basic welcoming hospitality because they would be strangers in the cities where they would be going, or they might just as well be treated harshly or even killed. Now he spoke with the voice of experience because Jesus had already experienced both consequences. In some areas, he had been welcomed warmly and invited into the house, and the entire house converted. And in others, no one would receive him. After sending out his disciples, Jesus himself 
it says in this passage, went out on a mission to their cities, teaching and proclaiming his message by healing the sick, raising the dead, and bringing good news to the poor. And it's said that the people in those cities closed their hearts and minds to him. Now, note how the passage tells us that there's really not a way to win with some people. That's just how they are. In this passage, it says John the Baptist rejected the people's hospitality. He remained in the desert and wouldn't eat with them. And because of that, this rudeness that he'd shown for their hospitality, he was labeled that he had a demon within him. On the other hand, Jesus accepted seemingly everybody's offer of hospitality and shared meals with all those who had asked him. And for that, Jesus was judged unfairly. A glutton, a drunkard is what they called him. As Jesus states in this passage, it may be the case that a generation is unable to perceive the indications that the kingdom of God is coming, that it's nearby. Psychologists would tell us today, who have studied this phenomenon for the better part of a century, is that what Jesus is telling disciples about is what we call today perception and misperception of bias in human judgment. And specifically, when we deal with people in our own group, it's different than when we deal with people who are outside of our group, strangers, travelers, and the like. And John the Baptist and Jesus and the disciples traveled outside of their own communities to other cities, to complete strangers in order to share. And so that's exactly what Jesus was telling them. Be aware, be aware. You will be given basic courtesies, hopefully, but don't count on it. And so the people they met were already biased in some ways against them because they were strangers. And while people may be aware of this bias in general, well, we're made apparently to be blind to the impact on ourselves of these biases. And why? Because we're more likely to believe that we're not prone to any bias whatsoever. Hmm, sound familiar? Well, it should. We're more likely to believe others are prone to bias, but that we see reality very clearly. No veil on our eyes. We are on top of the game. We are the wise ones, but the others not so wise. This is the reason perhaps that prophetic warnings fell on deaf ears for generations in the Bible and while even Jesus himself was rejected. And there are plenty of people in the Gospels who probably considered themselves learned and even wise. But Jesus' view of that kind of wisdom, he tells us, is an impediment to understanding God's grace and the plan of God's love for everybody. Psychologists call these self-serving and self-preserving biases that result in impatience and closed hearts and minds. We have expressions that you could talk yourself blue in the face and yet somebody will not understand. That's what we're talking about here. It's the bias. So the question becomes, can people hear and see the good news in the way we live as Christians, as much as in the words that we say or the identity we claim as followers of Jesus? Well, maybe, maybe not. Perceptual bias that Jesus encountered and the prophets before him encountered still plagues us today 
it plagues us as the disciples and it plagues those that we try to reach. Now the approach that Jesus took to mission, the mission of healing, leaving one's comfort area, one's town, one's community, and going among strangers to heal and to share the good news is still a good model for us today. We still want to bring the good news and heal and transform because that brings new life and justice to lives. We are aware of perceptual bias, just as Jesus was, but now we call it something a little different than the veil on our eyes. And because we're aware of perceptual bias that we're probably going to be fighting that and those that we're trying to reach, we sh should not become so discouraged that we stop attempting to heal or to declare to others the transformative life that we have found. Compromising the gospel message is also not appropriate in order to reach ears that will not hear and hearts that will not understand. Jesus told his disciples that even in the face of rejection, they should remove even the tiniest vestiges, grains of sand from their sandals of the rejection, remove that and continue to move on, continue to reach out to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. In this post COVID era, we may be recalculating and reassessing our options as modern disciples. How will we reach those who need healing and who are thirsting for transformation and for justice? Or will we just go back to the way things used to be because, hey, we were comfortable back then. Indeed, we had a certain routine. We could retreat to what we were doing before the Lord called us abruptly to remove ourselves from our church buildings so that we could be among the people and hear the cries and see their wounds. Yes, even as disciples, we have to admit that we are truly human and as such we have free will to shut our hearts and minds to this new experience. Or we could just as well choose to explore the possibilities with open hearts and open minds. The things that we were used to doing, yes, the ways we've always done it before, the customs and traditions and even the expectations that have hardened and grown heavy on our necks and shoulders have become a burden to the people of God. And so Jesus invites all of us who are weary and bearing heavy burdens to throw off those yokes and burdens and to find rest in him. The love of God, the love of neighbor, he tells us, is a gentle yoke to bear and it enables actions rather than impedes them. Love and commitment have the power to make a difficult task seem more bearable and joy-filled. It took some of Jesus' early disciples plenty of time and repeated exposure to the good news before they even understood how it had affected their lives and the many possibilities that it opened for them possibilities to heal and to share the good news with complete strangers. But first they had to fight their own perceptual biases in order to see God's grace and understand God's plan of love for everyone. So what about you? What blocks you from opening your heart to the good news? 
to accepting the lighter yoke. When have you experienced those blocks being removed by grace and your own life being transformed? How will you bring healing to your neighbor, to your community? Where will you go and how will you change lives through this ministry that has been given to you as a disciple of Christ? Now let us come before our God with our tithes and our offerings. Certainly we welcome any and all gifts to this church. And we welcome to the application of the gifts that have been given to you by God. Perhaps you have already had the veil removed from your eyes, as scripture says. You've been able to understand more about your own bias that may prevent you from being a complete and understanding servant of God. Let us pray. Take and receive these gifts, dear God. Bless and multiply them, that they may show the world your glory, shining through our lives. Amen. And now let us join in singing the doxology. join with me in prayer. Lord of all of life's facets, we come to you this day with many cares and concerns. We have planned for the summer months as times of relaxation and refreshment for trips with family to see new sights. And we need to take some time to stop the frantic running around to focus on the power of your healing love and to let go of all the demands that seemingly weigh us down. Oh Lord, we ask that you heal and restore us. Help us to be the church in the times of leisure as well as in times of stress. Help us to listen to your spirit as it whispers to our hearts new ways to bring healing to your, power, your people. And as we have brought our cares to you in prayer, let us bring our lives to you to receive healing mercies and to share your good news with those around us. Strengthen and heal us, O Lord and prepare us gently for all the joyful opportunities that you stretch before us. This we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught all of his disciples to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us sing our closing song. God be with you till we meet again.
now go forth in peace to live into Jesus's most joyful command, come to me. May we follow Jesus into a rest that bears fruit and justice, love and peace for everyone. Thank you for joining with us today in worship at Olivet Presbyterian Church. You're invited next week to join us for digital worship. And when the pandemic is over, you're welcome to join us in person at Olivet Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, for we are the little church on the corner with a big heart. May you have a blessed week.